Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our knock control that we're going to be finding with our GM Gen 3 ECU. So when we open up our calibration file, we're going to find that we have two different sections relating to our knock control. We're going to find a section that's going to be dedicated to the short and long term knock programming, and then we're going to have another section dedicated to the actual uh, sensitivity tables that are going to be related to programming the filtration for the knock sensor. So we're going to be able to filter out the background noise and then bring through what's actually considered, considered to be knock while the engine's operating. So we're going to be looking at all of this information in this video. We're also going to be setting up our VCM scanner so that we can pull in our knock channel or knock retard channel and then set up a custom overlay so that we can utilize that in our tuning process. We're going to be taking a look at some data logs so we can figure out the process if we have false knock retard or false knock sensor information coming in, what we can do to go ahead and figure out how to increase our sensitivity tables accurately so we can rely on this knock sensor and the knock retard to kick in if we have real knock occurring. So without further wait, let's jump into this video so we can check everything out. All right, so let's jump in here. We're gonna be taking a look at our knock control they're gonna be finding in this GM Gen 3 ECU. So I have my Avalanche file open. It's gonna be on a truck file. You're gonna find that uh, the truck and car calibration scales for the knock control are gonna be completely different. So we're gonna briefly take a look at this, uh, this, this truck file and then we're gonna go and pop in and compare it to a Camaro file, a uh, older 99-2000 era Camaro. So we can take a look at the differences of how they set up the trucks versus the cars. It's definitely going to be a little bit different. So we're going to take a look here in our engine tab. We're going to jump over into our spark here. And then we're going to be moving from our advanced. We're going to jump into the retard tab here. So we're going to be looking in the retard tab and in the knock sensors tab. So let's jump into the retard tab first. Now, what we're going to see here uh, or a bunch of tables that we have to kind of look at and some conditions that we have to meet to kick certain things on. And in this knock sensor tab here, we're also going to see some more knock details. Now, in this video, we're going to be covering all the things you need to understand with the knock control. We're not going to be covering this burst knock. We're going to be looking at that in the next video. Um, we're going to be setting up the scanner so we can tell which is knock and what's burst knock. But for right now, we're just going to be concentrating on learning these tables and how the knock control actually works and set up. So the first thing that we need to understand is we have these tables here. We have a knock retard table, we have a recovery table, and we also have our maximum knock retard table. Now, the way the GM ECU is gonna work is if it sees knock or if it starts to hear noise in the background, it's going to start to pull timing out. And it's gonna be based on these tables here of uh, how much knock it's allowed. If we jump into this table here, we can see that the values here uh, the value of this positive value, it's actually max retard or the amount of retard or ignition timing it can pull out. That's going to be based on manifold pressure here. So there's going to be tables defining how much it's allowed to pull out when it sees or it thinks it's starting to hear knock or it's hearing knock. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to tell the knock level. So on some OEM ECUs, we're going to be able to see how much actual knock activity is occurring and then make our own decision. Okay, is this real knock? Is this fake, fake knock with the GM ECUs? We're going to be relying on how the ECU has been calibrated with the knock sensors 